Hello folks. It looks clear tonight, but it's pretty windy. Um, well, anyway, uh, if you saw my last video, you'll know um, I had some guiding problems going on and I still don't have the problem fixed. And But I want to thank everybody for all the suggestions um, that you left um, in the comment section. And I haven't had a chance to go through all of them, but I've been trying the easy stuff for now. And the things I've tried, and the problem, by the way, is my RA is going up and down on the PHD2 graph. It's oscillating, reaching as high and low as four arc seconds. And um, that's not going to cut it. it it'll, it's giving me elongated stars unless I take drastic action and force better guiding in PHD2, which I really don't like to do because I know my mount should be able to do better than this. Um, and the things I've tried so far, um, the manual suggests, you know, tweaking the distance adjustment, the distance adjustment and range limit screws. Um, those really haven't had an impact, so I think the problem is elsewhere. Um, I reset back to factory settings. Um, that didn't do anything. Uh, some people suggested checking the, the screws on the pulleys to make sure they're not loose. I checked that, um, the, the pulleys that um, turn the belt, and, uh, and I checked the belt itself to make sure that was clean. And one person even suggested replacing the belt entirely. I don't even know where you buy belts for that, that specific size belt. But that's an idea too. And I've even made the mount east heavy. Let me release the clutch here. That didn't do anything. I'm still getting oscillations. And I always try to avoid being east heavy because what are you supposed to do, by the way, when it's 2 a.m.? and you do a meridian flip. You have to go back outside and adjust the weights. I've always avoided this. And, uh, but, uh, but yeah, thanks for um, everyone who suggested ideas. I haven't tried the major stuff yet because I can still image right now and I don't want to do anything too drastic. I haven't spoken to a seller yet. Um, I'm past the warranty period, by the way. And uh, thanks to uh, um, Explorer Scientific, uh, a seller competitor even chimed in with uh, what, uh, how I might be able to fix it. And they suggested just, you know, checking the belt, uh, making sure that's still clean. So, um, so I don't know. Um, for now, um, uh, I will get to the bigger changes eventually, but as long as I can image and I'm making sure my, my focus is pinpoint. And when you're pinpoint, it does hide um, some of the issues. But if you're out of focus, elongated stars is definitely easier to notice. So. Um, being having a, a crisp focus is, is really important. So that's the update on my mount. Okay, so right now my guiding is at 0.85, which is not a disaster. I think I can definitely get round stars with that. Um, the thing is, I've got my aggressive PHD2 settings turned on. I've got aggression up to 99 for RA and DEC up to 99. I, I like to keep those the same. And I've got my exposure down to one second. I don't like having my exposure down that low because they say, you know, the lower you go, you start to chase seeing conditions. And you don't want to try to correct seeing conditions. You want to correct tracking. Um, okay, so now I'm down to 0.75. So with these settings, that's why I'm reluctant to, to make big um, changes with the telescope. I can get by with this right now. Um, but if I were to go back to my normal... Um, PHE2 settings, you would see the blue line spike all the way to the top, up to four arc seconds, and then all the way to the bottom. It would just go back and forth like a seesaw. I'm not going to do that now because I don't want to ruin this the sub I'm, I'm capturing, but let's take a look at my stars and how they look. That's not too bad, actually. Um, you see what I mean? Um, they can, they can be rounder, but you know what? I can get by with this. This is at 100%, so this is how it would look in full resolution. So I can get by with these kinds of stars. If I go a little closer, it's probably not fair because nobody would ever look that closely at beyond 100%. So you can see they're not perfect, but I think they're acceptable. I mean, I've seen way worse from other people. So I, I'm in the middle of three projects right now that are all going to be over 20 hours each. So... Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see how this goes. For now, like I said, I, I, I'm reluctant to, to go to make too big of a change because I can get by with this. And one more thing about the EQ6R. 
um, is still in the basement and I'm making another change. I decided I, I, I'm flip-flopping on this, but I am going to sell the QHY10 OSC. I'm getting another mono camera, the, the ASI 1600 Pro. Um, so I'm going to have both my, my main rig with the mono camera and my wide field rig with the mono camera. And I'm just used to mono. I want to use that. So anyway, uh, thanks for listening, guys, and um, I will see you later. And I'll let you know if I ever really do resolve the CGX issue. Okay, bye. Ray, it's oscillating up and down, reaching as high as four arc seconds on the PhD2 graph. Oh, there's a nasty wasp. Making sure the belt is clean, there's, there's no dust or metal um, shrapnel in there. Uh, hello folks. So if you... <coughs> hello folks. It looked clean. Whether or not it needs to be replaced, I don't know. Um, 